Welcome to Candidate Conversations, part of Delaware Debates 2014, produced by Delaware Public Media in collaboration with the University of Delaware's Center for Political Communication. I'm Tom Byrne from Delaware Public Media. This conversation, taped on the campus of Delaware State University, focuses on the race for state auditor, and we are joined by the incumbent state auditor, Republican Tom Wagner. Tom, thanks very much for joining us. Oh, good to be here. Thank you. Well, let's start with uh, this. Uh, you're currently in your sixth term, fifth full term as state auditor. Why are you running for another term as state auditor? Well, it's interesting. I mean, in, in prior elections, I've run on, you know, this is my record, this is my background, this is what I've done. This year, I think it's totally different. I think this year, uh, Delawareans are faced with an interesting decision. We have total one-party control in the state. The, the one party controls the House and Senate with really enough votes to do whatever they want. They control every statewide office with the exception of the state auditor's office, my office. And, I, you know, I provide a check and balance. And, you know, I provide the difference between one party totally controlling all of state government and at least having some check and balance, some transparency. So, uh, you know, for me, uh, that's an important part of the election. Um, I, I just absolutely am opposed to any concept that one party, doesn't matter which party, but one party has total control of the state. History has shown us that that leads to nothing but uh, problems. And uh, I will at least do my bet to be the, um, I won't say vocal opposition because uh, in the auditing world, I think we run a very um, uh, nonpartisan office, and if there's a problem, there's a problem, we'll address it. If there's not a problem, we're not out there making up problems and going after people. So uh, I've gotten along with um, all the administrations that, I, that I've been uh, blessed with uh, serving with, uh, mostly Democratic, but um, I don't think any governor goes to bed at night thinking that you know Tom Wagner in the auditor's office is, is out to get us. Again, if there's a problem, we'll address it, um, and if not, we'll proceed ahead doing our audits. Beyond your experience in the office, what do you feel in your backgrounds makes you better suited for the job than, than your opponents in this race? Well, the interesting thing is when I first uh, became auditor, I was the, the first auditor in at least modern times that actually had a background in, in auditing. I'd been a banker and then moved into bank examination. Um, which is really a regulatory audit of financial institutions, and that's what I was doing prior to becoming a state auditor. Interesting, my path was to go back into banking. Um, and with the cutbacks in the banking industry, that's probably a good thing, um, you know, that, that I, I went the state auditor out. But, um, you know, that was my background into getting in. And I actually, when I first became state auditor, I had counted the, the financial assets of institutions that I'd audited. It was it was several, it was billions and billions of dollars that, uh, that I had uh, under my belt in auditing. Um, interesting aspect, when I first became state auditor, uh, we had 57 people and none of them had any certifications. And I'm proud to say today, unfortunately, we've been cut significantly in the office, but the vast majority of the people in the office are CPAs, certified fraud examiners, and we've got a very professional staff that, that have, the only ones that don't have a certification or the more recent hires that mm -hmm. we had, and it really takes about two years to get a, a certificate, and I think they will all get certificates. So my goal is to have a staff that, that everyone has a certificate, and you know, we're professionally trained and we're professionally certified. Beyond that, do you have other specific priorities or vision for the office? Well, I mean, interesting, I, when I took office, we had 57 people, the state budget was less than 900 million. Today, the state general fund budget is 3.8 billion, and I have uh, less than 20 employees. Now, I have positions, and I have the salary dollars. The problem has been uh, my starting salary, for example, for an auditor out of college, which is really the positions I need to fill, mm -hmm. was $32,500 a year. The average starting salary for an accounting graduate out of the University of Delaware was 50000 a year. Very hard to recruit. Um, at 32.5, when the average salary is 50, we that took us two and a half years, but we finally got that salary increase, the starting salary, to about 37.5. It's not where it needs to be, but at least it it allows us to to go after employees. So, and we filled a couple of those positions. So, um, you know, my goal is to to bring us up to 37 employees. 
um, and to work hard, training them, bringing them online. I've got a very, I've got a very good management team. They're young, um, and, and part of that was, you, you know, with the staffing problems right. we had, you know, we promoted up, but um, it, it's been good. They're very dedicated, they're very hard working, and we've got a good management team in place, and, and we're gonna follow up with bodies, and I just wanna be a part of of re-putting the office back together after really quite devastating cuts that the office had taken. You alluded to this a little bit earlier, but because of the nature of the work, what should the office do to work to distance itself from, from politics and party ties as it does its work? Yeah, I think first and foremost is you have good employees who have the technical capability. I mean, it's a very technical job. Mm -hmm. And you have good employees who can do the job. And secondly, I think you have leadership at the top that says, you know, look, we're not playing politics with this office. Uh, have no I care what your individual politics are, that we're going to run this office as a pro professional audit organization, just like any CPA firm would be. And uh, you set that tone at the top. Mm -hmm. I think that I've certainly set that tone over the years that um, you know we're going to play you know, by, if we're going to follow accounting standards. And if there's a problem, we will not back down from it, but we're not going out and making up problems. Do you feel the uh, work of the auditor's office uh, needs to be more visible to the public? Are there ways to make it more visible to the public so they, they know what you're doing? Yeah, it's funny because you know, whenever you say, uh, you know, you're the state auditor, people will either roll their eyes or jump back from you because they think <laughs> you're looking at their individual taxes, of which we do not do. And, you know, some of the work that we do is complex mm -hmm. and, and, and accounting and auditing have their own lingo. And that lingo can sometimes be confusing for the layperson. We try in our reports, and we've really been trying for the last couple of years to make them understandable not not only to the general public but in particular to government leaders and and policy makers who can then really follow what we're saying uh, we put all of our reports online and mm. we've been very very transparent uh, I mean interestingly enough uh, several years ago the Center for Public Integrity did a survey and study on Delaware and the state of Delaware got a C minus uh, they had one a the state auditor's office. I'm proud to say we got an A in that report where the state overall graded out as a C minus. What do you feel is the appropriate role for the state auditor in influencing state policy in areas beyond accountability of state finances? I, I, I took this position when I first went in that uh, I am going to stick to issues that are affected the finances of the state. In mm -hmm. other words, you will never find Tom Wagner taking a, a position on abortion or many of those issues because it's got absolutely nothing to do with the, the Office of State Auditor. And I want people to vote in the auditor's race based on you know, what I have done and what my record is and not on some position that I have absolutely no say on. And, and when, when you take that position, it also allows you to, you're staying out of that partisanship. I mean, there's so much partisan politics going on in the, you know, certainly not just Delaware, but throughout right. the country, throughout the world, that I try and stay out of those kind of issues that are partisan. It's like, look, here's the auditor's office, here's what we're supposed to do, and this is what we do, and you don't see me out there pushing issues, even though I personally may have strong feelings on them, but it, it's, it's not to me my place as state auditor to take positions on issues that, that really have nothing to do with the office. And finally, is, is there an issue or an area that you feel needs further scrutiny or investigation at, at this juncture? There are a lot of areas in the state, I think, when we look at, we contract out a lot of work to outside vendors. Um, and I think that, you know, the first line of attack on that is the agencies and themselves that, that contract with those vendors. I think there's times when the, the audits that we've done, there's been times when the oversight of those vendors has been um, sometimes a little lax. And I think down the road, one of the areas that we want to to concentrate on is looking at that, um, you know, we're talking about really at least a billion dollars right. and looking more strongly at those outside contracts that are performed by people outside of the state but for the state. And I think that's a, that's a big area. I mean, the, the, the state of Delaware has 
a fair amount of internal control problems throughout the state. And an internal control problem basically says that, you know, your controls are not in place always to properly protect the, the revenues, the expenditures, the assets of the state of Delaware. So we've spent a fair amount of time on that in the past, and we'll also emphasize that in, in really trying to push the agencies um, to correct those problems. For example, in Health and Human Services, you know, for years we write them up that they don't do a good job of determining eligibility for mm -hmm. people in their programs. Well, you're talking about programs that spend, you know, well over a billion dollars of, of federal and state monies. Well, if you're not determining eligibility, one, you set yourself up for strong potentials for fraud, and, and two, you're taking away, re potentially taking away resources from people who truly need those services and giving them to people who um, know how to game the system, if you would. And, you know, that, that always needs to be looked at because th there's limited dollars I have uh, I have real deep concerns about the future finances for the state of Delaware. Our, our revenue streams are stagnant. I can even see them in, in, in certain areas declining. Our expenditures are going up um, at, at a pace, I think, that, out, that, that outdoes inflation. And, you know, we're going to have to really look long and hard at how we spend our money, what we spend our money on it. And, and I really think, to me, what's important is is to really go back and look at agency to agency. Mm -hmm. You know, what services do we provide? What services do we not necessarily need to? Let's prioritize our services, and those that are really important to the citizens of this state. You know, let's concentrate and deliver on those services. You know, government can't be everything for everybody, but what we do, we should do real well. All right. Tom Wagner, Republican incumbent state auditor. Thank you very much for your time. Good to be here. Thanks. You can find all of our candidate conversations online at DelawarePublicMedia.org and DelawareDebates.org. Candidate conversations are taped here on the campus of Delaware State University and are part of Delaware Debates 2014, produced by Delaware Public Media in collaboration with the University of Delaware's Center for Political Communications. Again, I'm Tom Byrne from Delaware Public Media. Thanks so much for joining us.